Welcome to the 100th Monkey Radio with Tom and Ramon. And oh my word, do we have a show lined up for you guys today. Uh, we recorded this on uh, September 18th, and uh, we're we're recording the intro here on the 20th of Saturday. But uh, wow, uh, what a show, Ramon! This guy has absolutely hit the mark. And you know, during that whole show, my energy was running so freaking high; it was uh, it, it just amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah, I I have to say that um, for myself, the first hour was so high energy that I even got like some kind of like I don't know if it was like a memory or download or something where I kind of saw our guest like I don't know like he was sitting down and but we were like together it was weird. Like, it's one of those things that's like a fleeting moment. Right. You, you know something, and wait, don't leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was quite dynamic. So so we had James Evan Bomar III, uh, better known as Seven, from the uh, website uh, astralquest.com or uh, the resistance2010.com. And uh, he's also got a new uh, program coming out. I might as well throw that website out here right now. And it is called uh, uh, secretenergy.com. Now, uh, and this is a program they're getting ready to start up. And we're looking at it within the next couple of months becoming active where it's uh, open source spirituality teachings and trainings. And it's a a community-based forum, you know, a community-based program. Uh, open source, right? So that means everybody is involved and everybody has a, a, a part to play in this. And uh, it looks really, the way he explained it, it sounds really dynamic. And uh, he explains it a, a bit better in, in the second hour or so. Uh, you guys out there that uh, want to dig more into that, I definitely urge you to, to check out the second hour over on the, the 100th Monkey Radio dot com. Uh, so seven, he was born on October 22nd, seven, oops, jeez. he was born on October 22nd in 1978 in Detroit, Michigan, and, the, and is the author of Code to the Matrix and the developer of the Resistance and the Wholeness Foundation. He's deeply involved in universal transformation and currently resides in Costa Rica. James possesses an atypical background that has led him to developing the resistance, exemplifying strength and infinite possibility of a person's creative spirit by not just giving opinions, but setting the example. The example being, uh, who one was yesterday and is today is nothing similar to what one can become tomorrow. He has been a computer engineer, a gang member, a pastor, a CEO, a prisoner, enlightener, telemarketer, clothes designer, convenient store clerk, promoter, inventor, cypherist, and many other rare and sometimes controversial positions to arise as a quickener that can relate to people from all walks of life. James is currently working in Costa Rica developing a community of virtu- and virtual institute with the primary focus of non-universalism, finding the common integers of all species in order to learn how to build bridges to balance a mind, body, and soul. Uh, And, wow, uh, we kind of picked up the conversation in mid-sentence here, and uh just just this guy we we gave him a little bump and 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 uh off he went to the races with with what he was putting out there for us uh i'll I'll send you guys i'll i'll I'll, I'll read you guys the email i sent to him uh that kind of outlined a little bit of of what we were kind of wanting to focus a show on and uh, from there, he, like I said, it just it was a little bump to get him going, and oh my God, Ramon and I just sat back, and this guy was plugged in. Uh, in the email I wrote, uh, I said, I'm not sure if you have a specific direction you want to go tonight, but I'm thinking a lot about how we integrate to the level of being 
the uh, the level of being, the knowings we come across on our paths. Why do we waffle back and forth, and what, if any, are the key key phases we go through to reach the place of being with new concepts? Uh, How do we come to a place of knowing with how much we are able to share with others, and how do we determine how much is just too much for them to accept? Uh, I've noted many teachers just do not have that skill of empathy needed to feel the one they are attempting to bring to an inner standing. And even though the student may be nodding and doing the uh uh-huh, uh-huh thing, they may just not be getting through, and our our uh, the, the teacher may be just placing too much in the mix for them to grasp. Uh, how do we develop those skills, and what are some of the key components to consider? Now, just from that right there, uh, James took off into uh, quite a conversation, and as you guys are about to hear, uh, and I'm sure you will agree, that, uh, wow, this guy definitely got plugged in. Yeah. All right. So off we go into the conversation. Uh, Namaste, my friends. We don't need to go through these weird protocols. <laughs> and it's like, you know, the cordialness and all the weird stuff that goes on, that's just monotonous because this is about getting real about this thing. Some people are going to have some major changes today. It may not be everyone because the whole everyone thing is like, you know, wise teachers say never say everyone because you have to include everything. And just because everything doesn't want to do what you want to do, you know, you're going to melt down with that problem alone. So, but we're talking about those unique individuals that are ready to make that expansion because that expansion is here. And the first thing is, is that I just really want to say, I guess this will be the second thing. I also want to say that. As far as the introduction about myself and why I can speak in such an authority about these topics is because I'm experiencing this, and I've been experiencing this for years and years and years, ever since I was younger, and it's only gotten stronger and stronger. When I come in with uh, the explanation, I'm just a person like you and blah, 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 I think that kind of dilutes at times the power of the message because, in reality, I'm not a person just like everyone else in the tense that I'm making different choices with my life to expand into a a very small percentile of what generally a person deems that they can expand to in this reality. And what I'm talking about is I'm talking about the use of the third eye, and I'm talking about a full-on pursuit of sovereignty, and I'm talking about breaking out of the matrix just as a child comes out of the womb at nine months, rather than being picked at and plucked on and, and all that with the other species that are here on this planet and have been on this planet for a prolonged period of time because of their behavior. So we need to get it very clear that this planet means this frequency. There are several other frequencies here that once you get into, you won't even be aware of what's going on in the other frequencies anymore. You won't even be able to see it. And so we're going to talk about the mechanics and how that works and what's thwarting that. And we're also going to talk about solutions. So I want to let people know it's probably going to be in the beginning part of this conversation a lot of me highlighting some of the situations, some very simple, some very complex, about why it's necessary for us to start to implement what I believe the second part of the conversation is going to be about, which, which is the solutions. So I do want to tell people I do not believe at all that the problems exist before solutions. It's impossible. That's why the word solution comes from the word soul. Soul means sun, etc., because there's ancient knowledge and should be current knowledge that the sun is spraying out a reality that takes place on multiple levels. And Earth is lower on the level of receiving those actions. So until you get onto higher levels, and I'm going to be quiet and let you talk, but as soon as you, until you get on higher levels, then you always see the vibration of the frequency of what's taking place from your level. So in many tenses, you'll see the effects, but not the causes. And, you know, I agree 100% with you when you, when you talk about that, uh, uh, you know, we all are on one level. We are all the same, but there is another level there that uh, those of us who are consciously taking the steps to expand ourselves do take ourselves out of the out of the uh, the ninety nine percent or whatever you want to call that. And yeah, uh, I mean this this one's even very simple. I've learned how to simplify this. When we were all together, if we're going to use that statement, we are all together, because if we're together, like I'm in a bedroom with you right now, so that we got to get it very clear, or we're always together, so it's either one or the other. The time that we were all together was at the point of what they call the Big Bang. Right. 
which is so when there's a bang, that means something is exploding. So before it exploded is what I'm saying. Before the duality and the division, which is infinite, it seems, started, that's when we were all together. And the full collected being of what you're dealing with, to even accept that that's where we're at now, is it's almost like taking crumbs. It's less than taking crumbs because the true state of where you can and will be when you're truly all together, which is something that's already happening now, and this is something that this gets oxymoronic after a while, but what I'm saying is we are not separate. We're all inside of a bubble. We all have a biorhythm. We all have our aura, and there's many different things like grids and tentacles and connections that twine us all together. So from that level alone, no matter how much a person wants to feel separate, by fact, they just are not. Right. So then there's this idea of being separate, okay? So we just need to understand that there's another dynamic to this, and it's very tricky and very powerful. And it can convince a person that they are, in fact, they are separate. And this serves to weaken them continuously, life over life, dividing them smaller and smaller and smaller until they're just insects. So until we realize that there's real power in connecting to everything, that means nothing is off the list. And that it's only a reflection of self. Until we're ready to do that, which is the learning procedure that we're going into, then there's this, I, this, this progress that we're going through, this ladder that we're climbing, where we're, it's either, or we're either descending or we're ascending on that ladder. And so this is, this is a, a simple thing. And I call it a drama, though, because this word really etymologically means the dragon mother. And what it means is how the universe is stretched out across the galaxy after the Big Bang is very similar to a cosmic what they call it, a rainbow snake. And what they mean by this is, is that the rainbow is the multiplicit colors that actually create races and all their different divisions and twinkling and shining. And then the serpent or energetic electric side of it is what takes place inside of that, those dramatic worlds as they run on primarily electricity. And that's the kind of energy that is being dealt with versus worlds of magnetics. And you can just think about just the simple change if our world converted from electricity and oil to just magnetics and how quiet things would be. Oh, yeah. And how solace, right? And then the energy flowing around would be symbiotic with our ore. Like magnets, if you play with them a little bit, you start feeling them real strange and your teeth, the piezoelectricity in your teeth start getting a little funny. And it's because through what's called bioenergetics, it's the study of placing magnets around the body to open up different channels you can basically begin to activate the body's not electrical system, but magnetic, some say electromagnetic system that you know, are, are gives you different effects. But remember, what we have is several schools of thought and teaching here on the planet. So some person can cause this same kind of phenomena with herbs. Someone can cause this same type of phenomena with only elements and crystals. So we, in that way of being unique, each have this talent or gift, and that gift gives us the ability just to metamorphosize, just to birth. Because there's no greater gift than to be able to birth. But now we have to ask ourselves, how many children, and this could be our ideas, this could be businesses that we crashed, this could be relationships that we got into, how many children are out there running around untendered with no real adept or adult parent that means the person in their consciousness saying, hey, I'm the Lord over this and the God over this. Whatever happens here is going to be like it happened when I came in here. I came in alone, per se, and I'm going to leave alone. Now, you very seldom see two people die at the same time. Mm. So this means that there is a personal responsibility that each one of us has to get ourselves to the next level. And the reason why this gives us power when we start to just come back inside of our solace and saying, well, look, I'm still responsible for this rather than I got to save everyone. It's because the person actually starts to reflect more on themselves rather than finding an scapegoat. Because even the, the concept of the scapegoat, which is an inverted pentagram, is that you can blame someone else for all the problems. So when we understand the dynamics and the trickery to that, we can even see some of us, even as conscious people, have a whole list of things that we want to blame that basically becomes the reason why we don't activate. 
Right. Because the main thing here is, I'll, I'll tell you about this planet and this, the creators, okay? And the reason why there's, that you can't find the creators is because they don't have egos. They don't want someone saying, uh, well, you created it. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. They don't need that. They know what that equals. So that's why nobody knows what the creator is, who the creator is, except for the jackal, who's uh, king, who's king, who's Khan, who's the priest, who's the Cohen, who's the dog face, Anu, from Sirius or Anubis, even cannabis. Okay? That being is the one that said, well, shit, if the creators are not going to say that they created it, I created it. And that's what gives us the word king, because that then is one being coming forward and saying, <clears throat> my power is actually greater than everyone's. Do you agree or not? We agree, king. OK, so for that, I'm going to be your ruler. The moment that kind of shit happens, excuse my language, that is the birth of a god king uh, or what, what would be called a, a dog king. OK, and that kind of concept resting in the kind of beings we are as mine disempowers us from a simple level of if it's someone else that's supposed to be fixing this, if it's someone else or something else that's supposed to be taking you into the higher levels of your spiritual enlightenment, then it will be always up to that invisible force to make its decision on when it's going to do it. And don't be surprised if it takes forever because it doesn't even exist. There is no external God, in, if hopefully in the sovereign's mind. But inside, there is a master. You are the master of self. You have to go right in on yourself like the battlefields of Arunja. You're back again. The demons and the gunads and every other being is running amok inside of your temples the two states of the consciousness, right? And this gets into what we were, what the question first was presented today about. Why is it that so many ha can't get out of the dualistic or the gravitation of the dualist dualism? Like moment they, one moment they like you, you do a thousand things good, then you do one thing bad, and then you're under the bus. What kind of behavior is this? It's because the body, if you understand what the creators did, even with the plants, especially when they were in their original states, they created in symmetrics. Symmetrics means one side is actually perfectly identical to the other side. So believe it or not, if you'd arrived on the planet when it first jumped off, everything was symmetric, even the trees. Hmm. But as the division began and one side became stronger than another, everything in the reality reflects some kind of imperfection. Now when you look on a leaf, they're not perfectly sym symmetric anymore. When you look at even a face, it's part of the face is a little obtuse, okay? And this is, a re, this is the reality of, of being in this crucible. That's why in the earth, the astrological symbol is a cross. That cross in alchemy is known as the crucible. If you make it out, you'll be a thousand times strong. If not, you will always be under pressure. And so this is what takes place in the reality, and to, unless we choose to fall asleep. Unless we choose to go into ignorance, they say ignorance is bliss. <laughs> well, actually, no. What ignorance is, is ignorance is the moments in which you get lower on the vortex and when certain things start happening, you don't even know why it's happening to you and where it's coming from. Hmm. What we're really wanting to do here is take that knowledge, that intelligence. Let me tell you what the future is, gentlemen, and you already know. We're just only reiterating it. The future is knowledge. Let me show you why. Because a person such even as myself with certain levels of knowledge are already in the future in a certain sense to a primitive state of mind, if you want to give it that term, the mind who is looking still for the husband man or the king or someone else to take care of it so that way you can, you know, get its regular life going on versus the individual that grabs the reins. So let's grab the reins on the conversation a little bit. Let's pull it back. Let's talk about diets and let's talk about some some buckwheat grass and what me and my wife were talking about today is just how if you really were to try to assign a diet to an individual instead of saying that there would be like let's say three different kinds of diets or four different kind of diets vegetarian meat eater raw vegan etc it would be nine or however many people in the world eight billion diets and the reason is because of this uniqueness that's caused by several different things that we don't need to get into now, the person needs a specific calibration of elements. 
you could call these elements space dust. Because within the apple, uh, within the, the banana, both of those actually belong to the planet Venus, within each organism that is living here, there's actually a planetary system that it corresponds to. So just like Zodiac, you have these nodes. And if you have a stronger node on one end than the other, your goal is to balance out that node. And certain elements that you take in, now remember, you can go through several stages of matter. You can, the lowest stage is slow down plasma, that's meat, that's flesh. One more stage above that, that's vegetable matter, at least, and also cooked vegetable matter. One stage above that generally is grains and seeds. Then one stage above that, you're already getting into the elements such as, uh, uh, um, excuse me, I'm losing my train of thought here, but you're getting into elements such as what they use in the Ayurveda. You're getting into where the minerals, like what's dripping off the bottom of the Himalayas, the slag, with 85 minerals inside of that kind of substance called shilajit. You're dealing with those kind of elements that also power the body. As you keep moving up the ladder, there's a succession of elements that, in a certain sense, all do the same thing in their different categories, but it depends on the density of the person to what we're really affecting. Some things affect people way too strong. While other things, they can't feel it at all. So this is that specific diet. And there are some basic principles to it, like just think of it as this. When you look at it, what's its energy potential? <laughs> this is like hard-coded senses that we have. If you're looking at something that's been baked and broiled all night, <laughs> it ain't there. Because <laughs> what would you be like if you were baked and broiled all night? Right, right. I mean, you would be gone, right? So when you look at things, and this doesn't, this doesn't mean a person has to judge, and this is what I'm saying is don't judge this. Don't immediately go, well, that's why I said stop eating meat, blah, blah, blah. And like I've seen some people that have been eating meat that are more conscious than people who have been raw vegan, all spaced out and all airy and don't even know what the hell is going on versus this dude's been really in the field. Yeah, he had to eat meat, but shit, he saw how the war really was. You see, so don't start judging in a tense, and I'm just telling in the mind, don't allow your mind in this conversation to go out anywhere to point, oh, it's them. This is the key point of the conversation. Anything that I'm actually saying, do not allow your mind as a technique to go out right now and then point out who is like that that you know. Because the moment that it does that, it's not inside itself anymore. It's not working on self anymore. It's in duality. And so our being is so centralized in order to even be able to communicate with it and change it, one must speak that language. And that language, excuse me, shouldn't even be called language, not speak, because the direction it's going in is inside. See, speech, when you say something, even when you think something, it all goes out. It's penetrating light. But to have introspection, which is a technique that's been lost, right? Mm. To have introspection is to send those same energetic forces inside to regenerate the vehicle. This leads to spontaneous regeneration. I'm telling people what I've cracked into and others, it's not just me, is the great arcana. It's here, but it's actually here in a time in which it would be ignored. And, you know, every now and then I like to pick up a couple of these scriptures because they did steal the stuff from some places where it was authentic, mainly the Gnosis. But they talked about how the world had gotten to a point that they couldn't find one person that knew the supreme being. If you take that back into its original text and see what it says, it means that not one being on the planet could activate because there is no God. So everyone knew then that the being was God, that you were God. But beyond that, because God is Germanic God, Gud, the king, that it actually means something, just like Allah actually means specific beings. They're not, this is not, these are not general terms, no matter how much people think in English that they are. So what you were talking about with self and the keys to self, it encompasses mind, body, and soul. So we do have now what's being developed. We're developing a curriculum that allows an individual to work themselves up from the netherworld, because the netherworld is what I call the wilderness. It's the wonderland. All the what's, when, why's, where's. The commonness of all those words that I just said in this world are all, they, begin, they all begin with W. So the language has this code in it. 
And what the W shows is that it's called a zigzag. Zigzag, zig. This was an, even an ancient word. This means instead of you getting right to where you need to go, you're zigzagging. Mm. <laughs> How long is it going to take you to get there then? And so what we have here then on this planet is a real live RPG, a real live role playing game. I mean, <laughs> this is you in the role playing game because the malleability of this particular reality, meaning how much different things can be altered based on the type of knowledge you have, is tremendous. In fact, last time when I read the book, it said nothing cannot be done. <laughs> I don't care what situation you have yourself in. You just need the knowledge that is, you need the knowledge that takes you to the future away from that situation. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, so what I'm talking about with the diet, just so we understand, is that as, as uh, Ramon, I believe, was, was mentioning, that there are super greens. And these super greens, these things are super cheap. <laughs> That's what mm. most people like about them. But make sure you do get them from someone that is selling the organic. And these days, these folks so serious about this organic, man, they may shoot you if it's not organic. So there's some really good organic farmers out there. And these seeds, they can be put into this stacked tray. This tray is, uh, looks like several bowls stacked on top of each other. It takes very little square feet. And placed in the sun, and then these seeds on these different levels grow and sprout. And what is inside those seeds are enzymes. And the enzymes are basically the highest energetic potential of food. They are alive. Okay? In, the, in, in, in every tense, it's a purified plant, especially if you're using your own water and you're doing different things with the water, because that's all these things. They don't need soil. They don't need dirt. And like I said, you could feed on the super greens 24-7 and keep your trays rotating out. And then not even also these things are $10 and you get enough for lots of super greens. So that's just one thing. But one very powerful thing, because as we're learning now, I think they say, you know, some of the Tibetans, they just run around with a goji berry. But don't believe that they're ones that you get from Whole Foods. Uh, uh. These goji berries come from a mountain that is rooted in that same stuff that's in that she legit. So these goji berries, which is just a phenomenon of plants for those who study botany, anything that you put a plant in, it withdraws that essence and puts it inside of itself. This is also the secret of the horcrux. It's basically where on the planet, all of the trees that you're seeing are inhabited by a living soul. That is a composition of several different things that it has affiliated with over its process on this planetary system. And that's why I say every per there is a tree for every person. And then that tree remains rooted. So even when things get completely out of control, you still have a silver line or a tether or a root that will keep you... <laughs> Uh, floating out there like an astronaut <laughs> until you rope yourself back in. But Earth has several systems just as in its own advantage to keep going in order for us to continue this, this life and this experience here. But the main thing is go on out of the ladder. There's, there's more beside Earth. Remember, Earth means dirt. So from the ground up, we build this temple. And if you understand that the secret to a lot of the cultism is in the religions, which are heavily occult related on the malevolent side, is that they build from the top down. That's why they show the, the, the dove descending. The danger of this is, is that if you get fully activated, but you don't have a root chakra, you don't know where you came from. You don't have no foundation. Oh, my goodness. This is like the equivalent of letting off one of those shuttles that be shooting all the smoke and everything everywhere. But the launch pad is cricket. <laughs> now your parallax or your projection is off course. This is actually what causes a zigzag. So the knowledge behind the zigzag is that the tree or going up the tree was the straight way. While the tree also had these branches and those became symbolic of the serpent because that, those branches were known as the path. And on the path, there's lamb on the path. Lamb is, of course, the, the entity Awas. But there's lamb on the path, meaning distractions on the path that lead one into believing that the path is the full attainment. And this is when we throw our cards in completely, or excuse me, we keep our hand. Excuse me, this is when you keep your hand. This means whatever life is dealt, I don't care how great it is, there's something great. And this kind of thing was always driving us. It was always keeping us going. 
So it's something that you really want to latch a hold of these days is that even setting goals sets limits. You got to understand what you're doing. You can give yourself quasi goals and say what you want to do, but the reality is is that it's infinite. You don't have any limitations. There's no something that you're trying to become. And so these are the keys and the building blocks and the foundation and the fundamentals that it takes and it's you know it's coming out in a certain tense of eloquently with speech. In a certain tense, it may even be losing some people. But I tell you the truth, it's really the vibration. And let me tell you a little about the vibrations. Now, it's like CNN versus Vice News. Unbeknownst to most people, CNN is Canaan. Okay, it's the Kabbalistic word for Canaan. Okay, and the Canaan or Canine is where the dog god was originally from. So if you can understand the kind of information is always going to be disinformation. But it's not only that. When you study film very deeply, you'll find that if you keep taking footage and recoding it, encoding it, transcoding it, I don't care what that is footage of, it after a while has no meaning. It doesn't, you can't feel it. All of the essence of what was captured is gone. Versus if you take your own camera and you go and record something, you may see that lady and start crying, <laughs> my baby. How? And it's because all of the essence, or mo not all of it, but the next level of the essence, most of it, is still remaining there in that moment. So the reason why I bring this up is for people to understand that even the information that they're getting every day has been stepped on, has been transcoded and recoded, and the potency to it is just not there. So in order to put that potency back into it, and I got a little off my train of thought, but maybe we're just going to go back to the diet again. You have to ingest substance that actually have the potency that is necessary to rejuvenate your vehicle. So in a tense, what I'm saying, and to give it a nutshell, is that you are what you eat. In the highest levels of teaching to help an individual expand, generally the first course, the first course talks about diet. And the reason is because after that person gets done with the course, what are they going to go do? <laughs> They're going to go eat. They're not going to eat. Especially if the course is a long one. It's like, man, that was crazy. Let me go get something to eat. So any master's course did start with explaining to a person, look, you are what you eat. Once you clean up the diet, once you get rid of the karma, then you actually can get into this other stage where you're light. You get lighter. You start consuming light. Instead of flesh, we're always consuming something, though. And this is, uh, this is what also needs to be highlighted. Why everyone, you know, the light side is like, oh, we're so holy, tearing into that piece of meat, right? Uh, come on, mm. you're consuming something. But then when you really start reflecting on this, you even see tearing into salary somewhat the same way. This dependency on feeding this organism. Ah, it's got to get something to eat, whether it's a thousand carrots or a couple pieces of sausage. So it is a process that when you work your way up the ladder of the, uh, I guess we would call it eco the real ecosystem, you get into lighter and lighter elements. One of the major elements is water. Now remember, you don't have to do this in succession. You could do all this at the same time. I know people, big fans, are just throwing it all into their system at one time and seeing what happens. But your, the water, as you work your way up the ladder, comes into play because that's where you're getting 70% of your fuel from. So these are the step-by-step processes, and I don't care where you're at. I don't, I don't care what's in the water. If you distill it, and then you remineralize it, see, this is why they were able to give distillation water a bad rap, is because it will leach all the minerals out of your body if you do not put minerals into distilled water. Water has life. So it is naturally attracted to minerals. So instead of looking at water as just this passive thing that we're drinking is doing what we want, water is the real energy. So it's thinking. It has a hard-coded program of its progress and what it needs to do. So when it goes in the body, if it's distilled water, it's looking for minerals because it needs to live. So you have to put the minerals inside of the distilled water and then bada-bing, bada-boom, you got the first level of brew. Meaning that that water, if you can begin to swap the water out in your body with that water, it takes a process. The body goes through this process, and you know, there's always a process. 
But you'll see that the intelligence level will skyrocket. Mm -hmm. See, because a lot of times diets are based on whether it's getting you big or not. And obviously, I, actually, I'm, I've gotten quite muscular on just this diet I'm eating now, and I'm definitely not eating meat. But the reality is that some people think that it's just all about whether you're getting skinny or whether you're buff, because whether they're going to be a vegan or, or a vegetarian or whether they're going to eat the meat. But the reality is, is that what's never considered is how advanced is the mind when it's not consuming a lot of things that it just has to process. Let's take this out of the context of animals and things like that. When the body has to process anything, and let's do a little metaphysics here, when it goes into an organ, it is actually going into a chakra. We all know organs connect to chakras, so let us go. We now also know that chakras are planets. So this means that in your universe, you just imported a piece of chicken into one of the planets. And now that planet is consuming that chicken because these organs are needing to eat. Actually, the organs in deep mysticism were connected to the archons. The organs are the ones that need food. So if the organ is not running in perfect condition, not only does it drag down the other organ, it also becomes out of balance and out of harmony. So there's something very important that we need to see here, and that's each person has this universe. I don't call it a universe. It's an universe. But the condition of their universe is based on a ruler. So when a person elects an external ruler that never shows up, like al-Baghdadi, he never shows up. They call him the, the ghost because <laughs> he never shows up because he's, they're bringing the video out now. He's have, they call him a Rolex chic or whatever. It's because he's affiliated with all the foolishness that's going on that caused the, kermal, the chaos and turmoil. So, but they never see that person. But this is no different than what goes on with the whole God idea and the whole Jesus idea. It's no different. Nobody's seen it. Not in a thousand years even. This is a chagrin. This is, this is ultimate ignorance. But no one's going to move a finger at activating, even though we know we're dealing with a situation. So the situation, though, is so intrinsic. Because you can't die, next it becomes interesting. Meaning, once you get to a point that you realize that what we were, if there was ever a fear, it wasn't of death. Right. <laughs> it was actually of life and immortality. Oh, scary. It never stops. <laughs> like, imagine if you're experiencing something that you don't like, and then you get the memo, it's not going to end. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what do you, you see, the phenomena of what we can step-by-step step reverse engineer that will have to happen to the beings that existed here on the planet. And so when we get to this stage of just being able to take what's simple, and because it's about us, no time is being wasted. These stories, as like I said, even the language reveals a great deal of things through the etymology. There, there is a, a spell, as in spelling. There, is a, 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 there are rights. As, oh, that's right. Well, what happened to left? There are different kind of things going on with how the craft is being worked. And so this kind of knowledge, is instead of iPhone <laughs> and PS4, was exactly what a person was more aware of than anything else, meaning that man and woman's only power is what we're calling magic now. <laughs> they went swords and all that. <laughs> man, once you picked up one of those, it meant you were defeated. Think about the action. The moment that you make an action, there's a reaction. The moment that you slay someone, then you shall be slayed at some point by something. So just the whole way that we work was in such a subtle way. We were like surgeons with the dimension. We didn't touch or move things too much in our own. When I say dimension, I'm talking about consciousness. We didn't take it away from its perfection, right? But at some point, we did. And then now we're in this position. We created death. This is the cult of death. Okay, all the stuff that you're seeing in deep mysticism is just summed up as the cult of death. It's basically the beings that want to die so that they can experience something new. Hmm. Think about it. Once you feel like 70 years old, 80 years old, uh, why don't I go around for another round? It's like a hard code. Like, let me just start it over. The, the, the vessel I'm in is getting weak. Things are not going away. I just got too many memories. I wanted to start over. Now, for an immortal, the only thing they have is their memories. So they would never want to start over. So we see two characters even with side, inside of ourselves. One that wants to forget everything and just be blissful. 
right? It's not going on. And then this other character that wants to know all, see all, etc. So that is why, my good friends, that when we interact with others, there is a, sometimes results <laughs> that we do not expect that don't rub us the wrong way, or excuse me, rub us the wrong way, that basically are not what we expected. Because daily, especially because of things like the dream world, which is, that's a whole other conversation, that's a whole other show. But when that person wakes up, <laughs> you don't know what condition they're going to be in because they were so deep in the sleep below theta that the things that can really have uh, uh, sway over the person's consciousness, they were in there with all night, fighting and be <laughs> arguing. And, and this is a direct product of what was consumed. You are what you eat. <laughs> you see, so there is a chain of events that we're very much in, 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 uh, in control of. Because some people say, well, I'm experiencing so much stuff, I just don't know what's happening. <laughs> and they're still going in on something. That's where it's happening. It's starting right there because it's all the orifices. Whatever you're taking in. So the portals are the nose, the mouth, the ears. All those are portals because they take in. So what your air quality is like, what your eyes are seeing, like is it disastrous, you know, the environment. All of those things are your portals and that's what you're taking in. And that's what, until you become a master, will be controlling your world. But the master does not give any of that any play. The master is the master over the archons or over the organs in the body. Now, let's take the uh, jettison seat real quick on the, on the craft. And let me see, we're reaching about, oh, we're, we're a little bit in, but I want to talk about very briefly, especially in this earlier part. Remember, this is still the problems. <laughs> this is a bad right. resolution. Right. If we see now that the, what the world is, is it is actually the entire universe. Some people say it ain't so. But I'm telling you, the Orient, if you go to Wikipedia and you type in Orient, then you look at the etymology behind Orient. The etymology means Orion. Syrian, Syrians are from Sirius. Isis is actually the, the cognate of Sirius, meaning they're, they're synonymous with each other. There's many constellations actually embedded within the planet along with their people that are gravitating toward that state of consciousness. And that's why they reincarnated there. So when you get involved in the life and you get all twined in and chained down with something that you're saying is specific and the only thing, it's the only God, it's the only one. Oh man, don't start that again, <laughs> please. Because <laughs> what happens is multiple incarnations down that tether. Because each what, you would, what I see as a tentacle when the third eye is open, but each tentacle that is connected has this central portal, and I can only explain this like your chakras. When you stand in front of someone, there's this tentacle that comes out of the chakra and links up with the other person's corresponding chakra. And then a transfer begins. So there is a constant. The entire thing here is wired down on six. Or sex. There is a, it's, it's only, you drop the vowels, this is Kabbalah. It's only a continuous refertilization, recycling, uh, fermentating, fungating, going on all the time. And how we're experiencing that now is when you drive down the street and you see this big Burger King sign, and then you see Shinawa uh, 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 distributors, and then you see uh, 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 some model from this Victoria's Secret, and then you see all of these different things, and then it's all penetrating you. And these penetrations from these ideas put ideas in your mind. And especially whatever the idea corresponds to. And if it corresponds, because most of the time in the divicanic planes, they work with the demigods, so they work with the lower area. I call, they're called the gunads. Now, even the name, you don't even got to be like some seer. A gunad is a goon. Mm. <laughs> and the mm. gunads are basically the area that's down there by our function dating principle. And sometimes the gunads can actually wrestle their way because they're strong. And that's why you still need them. 
They are the fire, the hearth, and the fuel to the first level of the vehicle. They're the motivation, the arousal. But if the gunads breach all of the gates and make it into the crown, oh my goodness, then truly the devil or the deva, which is all happening inside, is on the throne. And so this is where when we stop taking these characters that we know that really are metaphoric and deep and we know that there's some connection with them, they kind of exist. But if we stop putting an arm, two arms, two legs and a head on them and actually acting like they had a life outside, then we will be able to see that they're reigning inside. Mm. And this is the key. This is like when you turn the tables. And so where the human's consciousness is, is in the context of the last point of their tale. Let me explain this. Your tale is your tale. It's your story. This is why masonry ends in 33 degrees. That's where Jesus ended in 33 degrees. The ascended man ended in, ended in 33 degrees. What does this mean? It means because there were more vertebrae. Because 33 is the third that fell. Remember in the book it said 33 to the third, the dull snake grabbed 33 to the third and slammed them down. On What they're talking about is that this particular body that we're in is wired in a way where it's missing its tail. So it's been domesticated. This is why they cut the tail off of a dog. The deeper level of the, these bodies are cognates of dog bodies and different kind of genes that belong to other kind of creations. That's what the, really the zodiac is about. But the tail is the person's story. So when you cut the tail and they're left with 33, then they don't have the other 66 to make the 99. Now let me give you the, the power of the number nine and what it really means. Feminine. Feminine. It's female. The council of nine are female. Let me tell you where they're from. Pleiades. There's not seven sisters there. There's two other ones that you can't see. Because seven always signifies the colors of the spectrum. Especially in, in all this knowledge and all this uh, Kabbalistic knowledge and all the stuff you see in the Bible, it all works on the system seven. This is why we got seven days a week, et cetera, et cetera. But that's Yahweh Baal. That's the wannabe God's number in, in that text, in that script. When you get to the number nine, feminine, that's what the kingdom that was usurped. So what the nine means is the nine colors that are in the spectrum. Now, what are those other two colors, though? So some people say, man, what is it? I don't know. I, I don't know if I could go with this. What are you saying? There's nine colors, not seven colors in the spectrum? No. There's two other colors, black and white. Hmm. See, they'll try to tell you black and white are the absence of color. No, 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 no. Last time I checked my quantum log, <laughs> the absence of color was clear. So if somebody's trying to tell me that black or white are not colors, then they're lying to me. They're trying to make black and white hidden. Now you see the entry, pat, the entry of the lodge. There's a black and a white on the floor because those are the two poles. So this becomes like ping pong. Somebody hits the ball. Let's say white hits the ball. It goes down all the color spectrums. And then, it, it, you know, in the middle is there's yellow. And then it goes all the way back up all the way to red. And then red eventually goes into infrared. Then it goes to black. Black slaps it back. <laughs> and then it goes back through the colors again. And then so... The, the reason why these poles generally remain hidden is because they are the ones that are really in control of the game. <laughs> but still remember, at the end of the game, the king and the pawn go back in the same box. Now, that box is incubation. Okay, a box is a cube. So this is what's meant by Pandora's box, mm. is the, at the planet not some people always take that story and they think of this little chest and the chest opens and all these little critters run out i'll cut it out it's just like the story of gulliver the story of gulliver is not not some giant that's running around with little people tying him down it's a story of man with all his habits or his hobbits tying him down so all these meant different things when they were taken into a higher spectrum so this is why when we're coming up to some of the half point i'm asking you questions maybe we want to dig deeper into one specific topic but this is why we get this adventure. See, what I'm talking to people about right now is not about how we retreat. <laughs> Rare. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. I don't, I don't care this life, uh, uh, who thinks what about me per se. I care about if I die in this life per se and didn't do anything because that's the only thing that really matters in my world. And they call that being present. 
But unfortunately, president is an anagram for serpent. Hmm. So this is where, once again, the occult knowledge busts its way through the door, through the language, and tells you the most present entity really here is some kind of serpentine. And we're not going to go into the David Icke phenomena. We're going to go deeper than that. And we're going to go Naga. There we go. Because the Nagas, which were the combination of what we're calling black and white now, the stringy hair, long hair, and the dark, dark skin. Where'd they come from? Nubia. And then they migrated to the Indus Valley. So our entire world, because when you see there's one primary group of people here, except for what you would call black and white people. <laughs> and that's individuals with six ether hair. This means black hair that is oval. And they're spread from the bottom of the Indus Valley, as deep as Cambodia, all the way back up to the north, all the way to what, we're, you know, what we now know as California and, 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 and United States and all those areas, even Canada, and all the Indian tribes that used to, they call them Indian tribes from India, that used to, that used to live there, because it shows that the real ascended masters, if you want to use that term, made their migration from the south, which has a deep level of knowledge when you understand what the South means and what's inside of the South Pole, but that's another show. All the way to the North. And that was their trek. That was even what the Germans attempted to call Ubermensch, which meant to overcome. It meant that physically, in a certain tense, the progression was to leave the Southern Hemisphere and find the Northern Hemisphere because as Kabbalah teaches, what Kabbalah is all about, and I'm getting a little off the topic here, but you've got to understand it all. What Kabbalah is is the study of the underworld or the shadow world because it's easy, to, it's easy to get in touch and easy to see it. But the next level of it, the real design of it, was to understand the higher worlds because every being already knew that the higher worlds, were, the lower worlds were a reflection of the higher worlds in some way. So that's what the study of Kabbalah was. So now you can see also why Kabbalah is so dark for individuals, because they're still studying about the underworld. They didn't even get the memo that, hey, um, you know, evil turned 180 degrees is actually good. So the reason why they tell you to examine evil sometimes is because if you have the right kind of mind that brings it into balance, you can actually get a reflection of the higher kingdom. But it's not here. It can never be external. <laughs> the higher kingdom is within. So, like they talk about happiness. Happiness is within. It doesn't matter where you are and what things look like. You could be in the Bugatti, going down the speedway with three people in the car that are worshiping you. Hmm. And if you are not happy within, you're Robin Williams, that whole thing. Right. You see? So this is a real deep dynamic game. I have had to learn this in my life in different levels because I realize even success, success brings anxiety. <laughs> it right. just does. Like it's a lot of penetrations going on and you're into a lot of different currents. And then all of those connections that you've established are all tugging and pulling. And then, but then when, when you monk on them <laughs> and you shut the door and turn off the phone and, and, uh, and, and sign off of Skype, there's, there's nothing there but you. And so these are, th but remember, there's not one or the other to do. That's where we come in as unique beings. We put the balance in between that. We need to make sure we're getting a fair share of these kind of situations. Like sometimes when I, because Costa Rica is very beautiful, it's like paradise. I already went to paradise. I have to go down to the netherworld. So I turn on Vice News. And I'll see what's going on with the seeds in the foundation of the world to see if there's something I can do. And then I'll go RPG in my mind, meaning I, I have to make fun out of it because there's no one else hanging around trying to do this these days. Gear up and then make a hell of a descent like Baumgartner from the moon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right back into the shit <laughs> mm -hmm. and get ready to go again. So remember that also because of the results that we get from, from people when they respond. It, again, it's the response that they can give. This is what I realize is that Never ever expect more from a person than actually you've gauged them to be able to achieve or yet less you'll be let down. And this is why the Save the World program, which I actually just unloaded about four weeks ago, was one of the most energy draining programs. And the reason was, is not that there wasn't 98% of the people that were exuberated by what I was talking about. It was the 2%. <laughs> 
the 2% were annoying me and making me angry so much, it was offsetting the 98%. What am I talking about? I'm talking about when evil becomes more powerful than good in your mind. Right. You got these hundreds of people saying, man, I loved it. That last show, man, y'all keep it going, man. Keep finding these people, blah, blah, blah. And then there's the other guy. You all are condemned, huh. you stupid fool. I don't know why you and your mama keep getting on that show, <laughs> right? But then this is the one that sticks with you. Then you're like, I can't believe all of what I'm doing. <laughs> see, now, they, now you're in the game. It's ping pong now. All of what I'm doing. Because, see, now what's happened is every, we want to be perfect. <laughs> we want to actually allow it to work on everyone that we speak. We want to see 100%. <laughs> But it, then the, if the Save the World program is loaded, the 2% become more stronger, and this starts to daunt the overachiever, which is a superhero name I created. He's overachiever. It begins to daunt the so overachiever because what you've literally done, though, is somehow you've got yourself entwined back into the same thing that you got out of, which was depending on others to actually bring you some level of happiness or some level of congratulations, etc., this is something that, and this is why I said the creators didn't need any credit for the whole damn thing. This is something that actually slows one down. Because it's the action of looking back into the past. Hey, what, what did you say about that that I did two years ago or two days ago? And it's taking even that moment, to, in, which is a moment of distraction from the magnificent future that you just keep leaving as a streak across the sky. So this is why in the occultism, they call the being that does that the blind one. Okay? Now what the blind what the blind one means is is that it can only see into the past. It can't see into the future. And the reason is is because the future is a constantly moving thing that is creating itself as it goes. The blind one is the one in the back in the uh what do you call it? Not the undertow, but in the the draft of that. So if you want to give this a visual, let's say it's the sun. The sun is gone. It's on supernova. Now, first of all, it's not a man. <laughs> the sun and sun and that means a boy. Cut it out. You have to have to be a generator, both poles, positive and negative. Every being on this planet has two poles, positive and negative. They are masculine and feminine, just primarily one or the other. And that's the wobble, of course. And I know we're getting to the top of the hour here. Well, what I'm saying is, is that what the sun has done as a dynamo and as an example is it's brought both of those poles into balance and then crushed them together and then allowed them to give off energy. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this at the top of the hour, because I'm not saying the sun is good or evil, but if you really under understand the program being spray sprayed out here, it means that your conflicts, disagreements, disgruntledness, all out uh, uh, dissatisfaction is actually what powers that. Because conflict is what you're seeing inside of a, an engine. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Two pistons, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Left, right, right, black. Good, bad. So this is what I was saying about you've got to watch the earth, though, because the earth is an oversoul. So regardless of whatever goes on in your life, it was in it for the experience. If you kill someone, because the earth is connected to both of you, it becomes the killer and the killed. So thus it balances itself out. Do you see what level the earth really is on? That's what the earth, it's no joke. The earth, the earth is biggest joke on everyone right now is that everything we build, and we're coming to the top of the hour here, everything we build actually is it. Even these computers, all this stuff, when, you, when your third eye opens, you don't see anything as separate. Why do people say that? Oh, when the third eye opens, you see one out of one eye, unless you see out of one eye, then your whole body be whole. What is this all talking about? Like people didn't know how to recite this stuff, but they don't even understand what it would be like to be in that stage. I was in that, I was in that stage about four months ago, way on top of a mountain with the third eye open looked into everything and saw it was all one large organism. Oh my goodness. 
either I was going to be completely terrified or I was going to crack a joke. So I, told, I chose to crack a joke. I told to get into the gesture roll real quick because it was getting too real. Because I realized that the houses were all camouflage for the many facets that this being has to use as its primary form of expression. So this is what was read in the book of Metuneter. I actually seen it. Metumenter says that the sub what the subjective plane is, is it's made out of the material that everything else is created from. And if we weren't seeing so screwed up like we've been staring into a sun for thousands of years and now our eyes got burning and we can't see anything straight anymore, what it's showing is, is that when you look into the organism again, you realize, oh, shit the language, but it'd be those kind of moments. The earth is plastic, is wood, is metal, is titanium, is anything that we mix together, because where are we going to get anything else from? Right. And then when we mix it all together like we do it, this is the funny thing the earth likes. We mix it all up and then we put it in front of us as a speaker. And then it has its interaction with us as that that was created in, in on that frequency. And I'll make this very simple. When you look at the trees, some trees can do certain things and some trees can't. And what I mean by that is some trees are healers and some trees are killers. And if you don't think that's true, munch on some poison ivy and see what happens <laughs> with your throat. So you can see this, though, with the third eye. You're looking at this tree and it has this kind of hue to it, like, you're like, this tree is making me a little uneasy. And, but remember, the oversoul, the planet in a sense, can then live through that frequency of how that tree is. So let's rewind. If a person becomes IV, if they do their metamorphic change of their DNA, which is done by the environment, that's what we know in fact to be true, environment changes DNA, Flora and fauna, what you eat in your indigenous culture, in your indigenous area, changes who you are into a certain type of being. If you lose control over that, meaning you're not conscious of that that's what's happening, that you're metamorphosizing, then indeed you can be just a piece in a very, very big puzzle that's not together. But if you realize this, and this starts to really sink in, this is when you either turn out the lights and you're there at that night and you're about to go to sleep and you start thinking about what I'm talking about right now because remember, I'm all in. All, all the chips are riding on this lifetime. I got my, my daughter is here now. I bought a baby into the world. Instead of doing inception, see, because inception is I can bring children into an inner verse. A man has a womb. It's the hemaculous golden lotus, the secret of the golden flower. But guess what? It's not so much as something that's not going to happen. Some people think of this knowledge as, oh, wow, I want to go ahead and then get the knowledge of the golden lotus so I can create an internal being. You're already doing it. But the incubus and succubus seem to be quite numerous, meaning that generally the mind fixates itself most of the time on deformed thoughts. Hmm. So thus, especially in the male mind, what it generally uh, uh, brings forth in its inception is these distorted forms that it has to keep dealing with and it keeps getting nagged by. So we're going to go ahead and take a break here. But what we've done is we've gone on the after quest. We did some introspection and some as of micro macro, which means as above, so below, look at how things are put together. And the reason why one can start looking at this to see if there's any truth to it or not is that we're starting to see that there is a blueprint to truth. And guess what? It's your body. Mm. So the good news is we didn't leave ourselves alone. It was actually impossible. We also didn't leave ourselves without a map, and that's very important in a vortex. Space has a lot of space. I don't know how that... <laughs> <laughs> you see? So the most important thing in space to have is a map. So when we come forward, as I always say, because I don't go backwards much, <laughs> when we come forward, we're going to talk about where Earth really is, put that down as a note, and how this is really set up so that way 
when you visualize a world and what a world truly is, you don't visualize the world that the new world order wants you to visualize. Because remember, this is not just about a world of chaos and a, 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 a dynastopian, whatever they call it. Not just that. I'm not talking about V for Vendetta. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you see a world in your mind, you see it as an orb. You see it as like a bubble. When we come forward, we're going to talk about how your world is really not a bubble. In that way, you can move yourself off of these fake, illusionary, spheric which fear, fear comes from the word fear. It's the same word. P-H is F. Spheric worlds that are cyclic, meaning the same thing, Groundhog Day is going to happen again, it's going to be end again. Is your birthday? <laughs> oh, shit, it's, no, it's Martin Luther King Day. And we're going to, oh, shit, it's the same thing every damn year. It's everything every day. There's a holiday every day. You see, so getting off of that, getting off of that cycle, that's driving you psycho, mm. <laughs> right? And getting into Yourself, the vehicle, empowering it up and going into your higher states of consciousness that are actually running right now. And the only person that may not be present completely is yours truly. So this is something that I think is great. And, and there's a lot of excitement. So there's a lot of energy attached to this kind of message. Why? It's true. It's the true. truth has this, <laughs> it's an inexhaustible <laughs> There's no, you, nobody's crabbing over it. It's like, nah, I can't tell them that. See, that's what those societies and those things, that's what they created. No, you can't pass, you cannot pass. It's not your job to say if a person can pass or not. That's based on their level of comprehension. And if they haven't been working on it, then they won't be receiving it. It doesn't, it, lock, it locks out. Mind you, it, it has its own judgment system installed. Nobody needs a judge or a king. Nobody needs a Jew or a Judy or a Jew. Nobody needs any Jedi's. You can do this from within. So I want to go ahead and give a break so that there everyone can refresh go. themselves. Wow. So, so oh, good, man. Yeah. Seven, you know, I just absolutely love having somebody on it. And, and just, uh, I, I'm just absolutely amazed at the way you get plugged in. And, uh, and this stuff flows out of you. I mean, every time I would, uh, a question would start to form into my mind, you would begin answering it immediately. I was like, man, it's, oh it's God, us, it's man. Crazy. Like I'm telling you, like there's a big thing about because sometimes I'll get on the phone with someone and I can feel it, man. I can't yeah. feel it. Basically, it's like I, I don't have that kind of connection. And I just because see, I, I see I see you as brothers, you know, like someone here with me on the side of me and in this to uh, to handle this and serious about this or else you wouldn't have made it a part of your life. In, in appreciation, when you understand exactly what that really means, like if that just that one that one sliver of what it even takes to 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 get up to do this, right? Then you're like, man, well, I'm a, I'm going to come out too, and I think that that's why the, it it wasn't a competition in the tense to there's a challenge. It was, hey, let me see how much more I can give. And then this became very fun because, like, yo, he's going to show out and watch. <laughs> like, watch what we get. Woo, he hit us with a hardcore wave. And this is why, and I just want to say this, and we'll take this break, but, and I think we're maybe already on the break, but there's a, there's a deep story within the, within the Hindu tradition that talks about how this whole situation that we're dealing with came about. And it was about one God, uh, one being that was an emanation, walking away from the collectedness. Because it was offended. <laughs> okay? And then after that being walked away, and so this is like, okay, as, let's say it's 10,000 of us. We're giving off a certain level of light. When one of us walks away, it's very difficult to achieve that level of light again. You see what I mean? It's like if we really understand what we're dealing with, if everyone is giving off a certain level of light and just one walks away, right. then the light is not as bright anymore. Right. So then one of us will decide, I'm going to go get him. But unfortunately, this means two walk away now. <laughs> right. You see what I mean? And this is how I believe personally, and this is just introspection. It's not everybody's story. But I believe personally that this is what's happened to the individuals that are on the level of the path now where they're actually beginning to crack this. Is that they're gathering and collecting themselves 
This is others that they're in sync with. There's a whole other level to this. You don't even have to say anything. We don't have to talk about it. We're just right there with it. And that synchronicity is indeed caused by our orbit and our connection to our oversoul. And in this tense, what the oversoul is, is united with all other oversouls, but also still its own being. And this, this confuses people. This is some of the higher levels of the esotericism, but it confuses certain people that you can be together and separate at the same time. Right. But why yeah. do people don't see that they're doing that now? Right. So all we're talking about is a higher level of, and this separatism in, in a tense is important because it allows the being to develop uniquely. Exactly. We don't want one of those sequential planets where every, yes, oh, everyone's growing at the same rate. They say those, those planets in a tense move very slow. Those collectives, those hives, they move very slow in their metamorphosis. Right. Why, when you get the unique people that are also united and connected, which is what we're seeing now on some of the microcosmic levels, but, you know, we should see it big soon. That's when we get what we really need. Well, I think we have what we need already, but we get more of it. Right. So, yeah. Right. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take our break here. Okay. And uh, we'll continue on in uh, the second hour. And for those of you out there listening on the YouTubes or the Vimos or the iTunes or wherever you this happened to have land, landed and uh, you want to check out our two, uh, come on over to the 100 monkey and uh, you can check out the second segment. Uh, Seven's website is uh, The Resistance 2010. Have you got another link out there, Seven? Yeah, actually, uh, they can go to astroquest.com, and that's where they'll, they'll pretty much find all of the outlets, except for the new one, which we're developing, something we can talk about towards the end of the conversation, which is secretenergy.com, okay. and that's where the curriculum is going to be. Oh, fantastic, okay. fantastic. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll uh, see you in uh, the second segment. Uh, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. The love you deny is the pain you carry. Namaste, my friends. 